In this video, we're going to continue our journey to parse JSON in an Android application. We know JSON's a lightweight data interchange format of which there's a, a lot of data available to an Android app. There's open city data, API data from many different sources, so commonly used in mobile applications. Now, where we are, we've already used a sync task to spawn a new thread. We've added our permission to Android Manifest. We've made a network connection and we've read the data. We've done all that in previous videos that I encourage you to watch if you haven't seen them before watching this video. In this video, we're going to see how to parse the JSON data that we acquired using the steps above into a series of DTOs, or in other words, data transfer objects. So a series of noun. Now I will point out that if we, you can use retrofit to do this all in one step. So if you're here just to see how to parse JSON and Android, I encourage you to start by watching the retrofit video. Uh, but nonetheless, this shows how to do it by using a series of classes called JSON object and JSON array. Many times those are things that you want to use anyway. So we're going to start by trying to visualize the data that we have. First of all, you look and you just see some symbols and text here, but we know we want to convert these into objects. So I'm going to select what we see here and then go to jsonviewer.stack.hu, paste, and then go to viewer. And what you're going to see here is it starts with a curly, which indicates an object. Underneath that, we have square brackets, which indicate an array or a collection of data. Expand the square brackets and you see a numbered series of lines. Each one of these will have some similarities. So I'm looking now just at Redbud data, but you see that each one of these plants has an ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common name. The values are different because we have Appalachian Red Redbud, Lavender Twist Redbud, and Eastern Redbud. So the values are different, but you'll see that the attributes are the same. Now compare the attributes that you see here, ID, genus, species, cultivar, and common, and you see global unique identifier, genus, species, cultivar, and common. By the way, the serialized name uh, annotation that you see here, that I added as part of the retrofit video, not required for this video, but nonetheless, if you're curious why you see serialized name here, uh, that will make more sense when you take a look at retrofit. Uh, but nonetheless, we have a JSON stream, we need to parse it. Let's start by going to this uh, plant JSON DAO. We'll zoom up on this, and we simply need to uh, fill in the blank here. In other words, we just need to fill in the rest of this method because we're already getting the JSON data in this string that we're calling request. So let's, first of all, let's call that something a little more meaningful than request. Let's call it raw JSON, just like so. And then what we're going to say is, okay, well, how do we parse this? Well, the two tools at our disposal are a class called JSON object and a class called JSON array. So if we go to the JSON viewer, if we see curlies, we know object. If we see square brackets, we know array. So we have to take this entire unit of text and pass it into a JSON object. So let's start with that. We'll say, down here just a bit, we'll say, let's make a huge JSON object out of this entire string. And we'll say uh, JSON object, see how that kind of auto completes there, root, equals new JSON object, and then we pass in, whoops, looks like I need to recapitalize. Then we pass in our uh, raw JSON string, just like so. Okay, it gives me a red line. What do we see there? Uh, add exception to method signature. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and say yes. As a matter of fact, we can just make this, because we're now throwing a couple of different exceptions, what we can do is we can go up into our uh, interface, iPlant DAO, and let's just have this throw the ultimate top level exception, the one that starts with exception like so. So there we go. Okay, just a little tidy up there, a little divergent, but a little tidy up. Back to where we were, and we know we're creating this huge JSON object. Now, get the collection of plants from this object. So if we take a look at the object, we know we have that starting curly, and then under that starting curly, we have only one thing, which is an array or a collection of plant objects. We're not worried about going further down this tree yet. We're just concerned with this high level root object that we've already created. And now we want to get this plant array out of that object. So this will be fairly straightforward. We simply say root, where root is the variable declared up here. And then we say dot get JSON array, like so. And then we pass in uh, the name of the JSON array, which is plant. 
just confirming, you see JSON and you see plants. So that gives us the JSON array. The nice thing is this is something that we can now iterate over and we can shake hands with each one of these plants that is within the plant array and we can make a, uh, we can make a collection of plant objects out of it. So let's go ahead and iterate over the array. Let me terminate with the semicolon and let me do a little bit of tidy up here, control alt V and we'll call this, yep, plants is good. Now let's make a loop. We'll go for an old school for loop. So we'll say four, just like so, and then int i equals zero. So start our counter variable off at zero, and then i is less than plants dot length. So the number of plants that we have to iterate over, and then i plus plus is our increment part. So in other words, every time we loop, uh, we add one to the i. Okay, now, get the current plant object. And what I mean by that is every time we iterate, that i is going to add one. So in other words, if you take a look at the loop, you'll see that i starts as zero, we add one at the end of the loop. So i starts at zero, and we have our sources canadensis. Now we say, I want the next item, so we'll use i equal to one. We get our Appalachian red redbud, i equals two. We get the lavender twist redbud, so on and so forth. So the i is going to closely align with these numbers that you see here because the numbers are essentially array indices or elements within an array. Okay, so get the current plant object. I'm going to say plants, which remember that's my array up here, plants.getJSON object, and notice that that requires an index. So the index is simple. The index is our counter variable, i, just like so. Now, put my cursor on the method call and control alt v to assign this to a local variable and we'll call this json plant just like so uh, now what we're going to say is okay let's get the id so json plant and then we'll say dot get int and the name is id now what do i mean by name let's take a look at our json one more time and let's remember that each of these plants uh, look very similar because they all have the same attributes with a different value. So ID is that unique identifier, genus, species, cultivar, and common are the other things that we need to remember. So JSON plant dot get ID and we get our name, JSON plant, and we'll say dot get string. I said get ID earlier, I meant get int. Uh, and then we'll say uh, genus, just like so, JSON plant dot get string. So we're pulling each of our items out one at a time using the data type to decide how to pull them out. So species, okay, JSON plant dot get string, and we'll say cultivar. Finally, JSON plant dot get string, and for this one we'll say common, just like so. Now we're receiving the data, but we're not doing anything with it. So now we need to store the data somewhere. So I'll say int ID equals JSON plant get ID. And then we'll say string genus equals json plant dot get genus, so on and so forth. String uh, species equals json plant dot get string. As a matter of fact, we can go a little faster here with our control alt v shortcut. And you see that uh, Android Studio is not only smart enough to know the data type, but it also makes an intelligent suggestion on what the variable name should be. Saves quite a bit of typing that way. Now, create a new plant object. So I'm going to say plant DTO plant equals new plant DTO. So unlike a string, this is actually an object or a collection of data, a collection of the state that describes this plant. So plant.setGUID, and we pass in the ID, plant.setGenus, and we pass in the genus, plant.setSpecies, and we pass in the species, plant dot set common and we pass in the common name plant dot set cultivar and we pass in the cultivar and we're looking pretty good right now the only thing we have left to do is add this to our set of results which right now we're declaring up above and then we're returning that essentially empty because we haven't added anything to it so add this plant to our results so I say results which is an array list dot add and then plant, just like so, terminate with a semicolon. That's pretty good for a JSON parse. I do have a breakpoint there, so we're going to leave it there just in case I'll leave one more inside of the for loop. 
Um, but I have a, I have a feeling I'll probably take that one away before too long. Let me take a look at GPS a plant. And what, is there anything else we need to do in GPS a plant? I'll go down towards the bottom and we'll take a look at our do and background method. We see that all plants is going to be what was just returned. In other words, we are returning this list of all plants here. That's going to get returned back to our do and background method on line number 360. Now it's giving me a little bit of anxiety here because it's only set up to catch an IO exception, an input out exception, which is a uh, specific type of exception. I'm going to take that back, back and make that just a generic exception. So we get our plants, then we return all plants, and when we return it, it's going to come back to our on post execute method. Our on post execute method is going to use this to fill out the autocomplete text. In other words, if you see at the top, I can right now I can type in Eastern and what we want to do is we want to have this auto complete with all of our Eastern red buds. So we have that set up. Uh, let's take a look debug through and make sure it works okay. Now we see in the on create method that it's starting by kicking off this thread which we've seen before we did that in a prior video. So I'll simply choose F9. Now we see the do and background thread where it's going to do a bit of this processing. So F8 to step over, F8 again, F8 and F7 to step into the search method. Now we go through the search method. We've seen a lot of this before because we did the request URI in a previous video. So I choose F8, it comes back, and now we have all of the data as a string in this raw JSON uh, variable here. So quite a big string, but a string nonetheless. Now we've parsed that into a JSON object that we're calling root, and this now contains all of the data from the string above. Now from that root object, we have to get out the array of plants. So F8, so far everything's executing pretty, pretty well, so I'm fairly happy. The first item on our list is a begonia. Now let's take a look. If you see the, uh, vari the uh, variable here, it's kind of hard because the breakpoint is right above it, but you can see begonia whopper red with bronze leaf. And if I go up to my JSON stream, and I search just for the letter E, which is what we just searched for in our application, the first response we'll get back is a begonia whopper again. So sure enough, begonia whopper red with bronze leaf. We have a few that don't have genus species or cultivar that follow that. Those will be a bit more difficult to follow through just because we don't have values for those attributes. That's just the data that we're looking at here, nothing about our program itself. After that, it goes in alphabetical order of genus. So you'll see a lot of uh, things like abelia, Abies, which is a, uh, a fir tree, uh, acacia, which is a tree called a wattle, common in uh, Sydney, Australia, New Zealand, that area, uh, acer, which is a maple. So you see that they come alphabetical after this. There are going to be an, a, quite a few records, a total of about 5,000 that come from this API call. But nonetheless, let's just take a look and let's watch, watch as it essentially marshals the data or turns the string into a series of plants. I'm going to extend on the uh, JSON, uh, sorry, I'm going to extend results. You see results is this array that is eventually going to hold our return data. Right now in the first iteration, you see that the results array has zero objects because it is a size zero. But let's watch as we walk through this, we create a plant, which is our begonia whopper, add that, and now take a look. Do you see how the results is now equal to one? And if I extend here, you see begonia whopper red with bronze leaf whopper, so on and so forth. Let's go through a few more iterations here and I'll go a little bit faster. And each time I iterate around, you'll notice that the results number increases by one because each time we're creating a new plant and we're adding it to this results array. So three and now four and a few more times. Five, and we can keep going, keep going. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to untick this breakpoint here. I'm going to tick a breakpoint or leave the breakpoint all the way at the bottom, and I'm going to choose F9. As I choose F9, you see it has now parsed all of our plants and it has 4,909 plants. I can scroll down and you'll see, no surprise, it's in alphabetical order. Just as we saw from the JSON stream, from the raw JSON stream, you can see all of the genus right here, not quite flush left, but pretty close to the left. So it has parsed all of these, starting with the A's and going all the way down to the Y's and so on and so forth. Quite a bit of data. So I choose F8. That's going to take me back to my GPS of plant activity. 
We return our all plants with size 4909. Remember this is occurring on the background thread because due in background is what happens on the background thread. When this method finishes up, the Android operating system is going to take the return value from this method, which guess what? Is our array called all plants? That's what's getting returned here. And it's going to pass it to the on post execute method. The advantage of on post execute is that runs on the UI thread. So what you'll see here is we're going to take all of those results and we're going to set them as the autocomplete value for our uh, plant name, which is what's up here at the top. So let me go ahead and choose F9 and let's watch as this continues. On post execute picks up. Remember, this is on the UI thread. If we take a look at plant DTOs, we see that this value passed in has about 4,909 records. Uh, naturally, I'm sure you're connecting the dots now. Those are the records from our JSON stream that have now been parsed into objects. F8, F8, we set their adapter, and then finally F9. So let's go to our application now. And now watch as I type in something like Eastern. You see, as I start typing, it's auto-completing against a very long list of results, much longer than we had before in our stub. When I type Eastern, for instance, we see quite a few, let's see if we can get that all the way, we'll see quite a few options that contain the word Eastern. So Eastern Red Cedar, Eastern Wahoo, Eastern Hemlock, so on and so forth. If I type Acer, we see all the maples. Remember those Acers were up towards the top. If I type Acacia, we see, uh, we see all of those acacias as well. So now we've gone from our stub that we had before, our plant DAO stub with just some hard-coded values, all the way up to a real live JSON DAO where we're actually sourcing data from the internet. So I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you.